Hey guys, just wanted to fill in my new subscribers on how I do my reviews, basically, guys. I review retro games, it's the other thing I enjoy doing when I'm not commentating a first-person shooter. I love retro games to death, and I really like sharing my opinion about various retro games. So, this is a review for Sonic the Hedgehog 2, you might have guessed I was going to review it. And I hope you guys enjoy it. I know it's not Call of Duty, but please, I put a lot more time into my reviews than I do into my commentary, so please guys, give me a lot of support on this as well, because as far as I know, I'm the only commentator that does both Black Ops and Retro reviews, so please just give me some love in here and like this video, and, and if you have a suggestion for a SNES or Genesis review, hit me up. Let's get on with this review, guys. Thanks so much for watching. It means a lot to me. Hey guys, what's up? This is Metroid 070, aka Only Use Me Feet, here with a review for Sonic the Hedgehog 2. This Genesis classic was released in 1992 by Sega themselves, and many consider this one of the best Genesis games of all time, so how does it stack up today, and what do I think of this apparent gem of the Sega Genesis? So we all know Sonic's a hip, fast, cool dude, but what did this amazing sequel bring to the table that improved on its predecessor? Well, the biggest thing is probably the addition of Tails, his cute little buddy that's a fox with two tails. Now Tails is unique in that he's with you almost the entire game, and he attacks enemies for you, collects rings for you, and makes it a very enjoyable experience. Even better is a second player can pick up their Genesis controller in the second controller port of your Genesis console, and they can actually play with you the entire game, attack bosses with you, help you collect coins, things like that. Additionally, with the addition of Tails, they could add multiplayer in the form of versus multiplayer, and you can do various cool things, such as split screen races and special stage races. So, the Tails edition was a very great addition indeed. The only other real change to the formula is this game opted in for more acts, less zones, or more variety of levels, but they don't last as long. So, for example, instead of having Green Hill Zone 1, 2, and 3 like the original, in this one you have Emerald Hill Zone 1 and 2, then you move on to the next 1 and 2. So, what I'm trying to say here is this game has more variety, and that makes it better in that regard than its predecessor. So the biggest addition to gameplay has to be the addition of Spin Dash. Spin Dashing basically lets you instantly get a burst of speed, and overall speeds up the pacing of the game, which being Sonic the Hedgehog is a very awesome thing to do. As far as gameplay mechanics go, this game is what you'd much expect from Sonic the Hedgehog 1. It works extremely well, and they really did not change too much to the physics engine, unlike another recent Sonic game, <coughs> Sonic 4. So, the physics in this game are just amazing. Sonic goes exactly where you want him to go, he doesn't give you any crap, and the game is a lot better for it. The level design in this game is also top notch. The levels are designed perfectly, and the best thing is the difficulty scales from very easy to very hard over the period of the game, and up until the very end, the difficulty never jumps on you. And I think that's what a good game should have, is difficulty that scales nicely, and up until the end, the game does an extremely good job of scaling difficulty. But at the end, man, oh man, will you guys be throwing some controllers? But hey, it's a Sega Genesis game. What good would it be if it didn't have insane difficulty at the end, right? So other than that, you know, this game is your platformer. You run around, smash enemies, speed through levels as fast as you can. 
And that's another cool thing. I love the pacing of this game. They used to market this game. Mario is slow, Sonic's fast. And I'll agree with that. This game is a lot more enjoyable to play than Mario nowadays because the pacing back then and now feels very fast, very fresh, and honestly never gets stale. And this game is always throwing new tricks at you. Unlike Mario, who is basically, you know, you're playing the same levels over and over again. But if it works, I guess that's not such a bad thing. So how do the graphics hold up today? The graphics are very, very nice. But the only thing I do not like about them is I think Sonic the Hedgehog 1 look better. Basically, for me, this game looks pixelated today. Even 10 years ago, it looked pixelated. And Sonic the Hedgehog 1 just has always looked smoother than me. And same with Sonic the Hedgehog 3. I don't know, this game has just always looked pixelated. Not sure why. But that will not hinder your enjoyment of this game at all. And a matter of fact, you can argue that it's part of its art style. Which, by the way, is also very nice. The music in this game is also very well done. The tracks fit each world to a T. They change variety and tempo and style. And overall, this score is just amazing. You can go on Overclocked Remix and just listen to remixes of songs from this game all day. The music is just so varied, and each track fits with each level of this game, and it works perfectly. I cannot put any other song to this game. The soundtrack is just one to be... You can't top it. I'm lost for words. You can't top the soundtrack. Replay value is also extremely high. As this game won't take you over an hour to beat if you do beat it, um, you can replay this game over and over again without being bored. Yes, it's fast paced, fun, it's not hard to get through until the very end. And the cool thing is this game even has a scoring system, which in my opinion, scoring systems always add leaps and bounds of replay value. Now note to you guys, it does not save scores, so you're going to have to get the little pad and paper and write down your scores, but I can see some of you guys having some great replay value from that. Additionally, the inclusion of versus multiplayer and co-op multiplayer also greatly increases replay value, and I've played this game with a variety of people of a variety of ages, and everyone I've shown this game to have a blast with it. So definitely a good game to get for anyone. Overall guys, if I had to give this game a score, I would give it a 9 out of 10. I do love this game and almost everything is perfect about it, but the high difficulty scaling at the end, a few minor glitches and or mishaps in level design, and the graphics being, in my opinion, not up to par with the originals, all hinder me from giving this game a perfect 10 out of 10. However, I would still say this game is an essential pick up for any Sega Genesis owner. And if you guys do not own a Sega Genesis, well that's okay too, you can get this game on a variety of compilation discs released by Sega. You can get this game on Sonic Jam for the Sega Saturn, that was its first re-release after its Sega Genesis debut. You could get it for a computer back in the day I guess, I'm not sure if that's Windows or DOS. but. The way you guys should get this is Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection on PS3 or Xbox 360. It is the best $20, actually it was $15 new at GameStop here recently. It is the best $20 though you will ever spend, Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. To give you guys a scale of how epic that disc is, this is one of 49. 49 games on that disc. Vector Man, a game I reviewed a few videos back, look, you guys can look for it, is also included on that disc. That game's also amazing. And overall, that disc, in my opinion, is probably the most essential disc you can get for your PS3 or Xbox 360. I can't argue it enough that every single 360 PS3 owner should own it. So. That's my little rant on that disc, guys. Um, definitely pick that up. That's my second preferred way to play this after the original hardware, which is obviously the best way to play it. So, 
Overall, guys, 9 out of 10. Definitely get Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection or the original Heartroots. Those are the only two ways, in my opinion, to play this game. Oh, you're still here. Well, I guess I should show you guys something for sticking around. Okay, how about I show you guys that uh, dongle I was talking about in my last commentary. I got footage of me dying on it. But this time I actually nailed it the second time I played the level, so I guess dying 11 times did give me some good practice for it. So, hope you guys just enjoy this bit of footage. Thanks for sticking around, it means a lot to me.